Hey guys, welcome to the December TBR video. So, um, any one of you who are very um, observant will realise that I have literally just put on a jumper between filming my October slash November one and filming the December actual TBR. So like the October, November wrap up. So we have Bo kind of joining us from my knee. Um, I don't know what it is about him at the moment. I've just, I've been in the cozy mood. So usually for these videos, I will choose like four books plus the book club book to read. And that's the books that we'll have this month. However, it's obviously it's December leading up to Christmas. So we're going to do things slightly differently today. Before I get onto the slightly differently, I will say that the book being carried over is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This was supposed to be the um, November read. I didn't get to it until like the final day. Um, I'm currently almost halfway through the book. Um, so yeah, but that's kind of our first book and I thought I'd give the honourable mention to it. I have kind of four books based around the Christmas period. So this is Seven Days of Us, which I believe I got from 66 books. I don't know which will probably be the haul coming up after this. Um, I have started this. I've literally read like 27 pages though. Um, so that's the first book and it says, it's Christmas and the Birch family is gathering for the first time in years. Olivia, the eldest daughter, has returned from treating an epidemic abroad and must go into quarantine for seven days. Her mother has decided it's the perfect opportunity to spend some special time together. Her youngest sister wholeheartedly disagrees. Her father isn't, an allowed, isn't allowed an opinion. When no one can leave the house, seven days for the Birches feels like an eternity, especially when they're all harbouring secrets, one of whom is about to come knocking at their door. So it's very based around the um, festive period, but I think it's more, part of me wants to say it's going to feel like more of a psychological thriller. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I just, I feel like it's going to be more of a psychological thriller. Because um, obviously it's like, they're all harbouring secrets. And at this point, um, we're kind of just learning what these secrets are um, so far in the book. Let's start with the two books that I've already mentioned and then get to... In my previous book, in my whole video, I've done the 66 books plus ones that I hadn't shown on camera. Um, so, first one of those was The Perfect Christmas Village, which says, Blythe is just one sad away from being real estate agent of the month, so she twists the truth to sell a home to city boy Sam, who is looking for the perfect house in the perfect location. Little does he know he's just bought a cottage in the middle of the most Christmassy village in the country. And if there's one thing Sam loathes, it's Christmas. Sam's arrival puts Holly Cross's chance to win the title of Britain's most perfect Christmas village in jeopardy and the villagers are seen up in arms. Meanwhile, Sam is in his own personal house surrounded by fairy lights and everyone is looking to Blythe to fix things. But as the festive season looms, maybe there's more than just Christmas in Holly Cross for Sam to fall in love with. This literally just sounds like every single Hallmark Christmas movie that's out there. And that's why I picked it up um, in part of the, the like two for nine at um, Tesco. Was it? Yeah, it was Tesco. Then the other book I'd picked up was The Christmas Book Club. So this has two titles. One is the US to do with like a hotel. Like it's like the Christmas hotel or something. Um, literally same premise, just different title um and I learned that because of Rachel um and it says every year Erica Claudia and Anna reunite for their book club holiday they're bonded by years of friendship and a deep love of books but there is still so much they keep from each other at the cozy maple sugar inn Hattie specializes in making her guests dreams come true but this Christmas all she wants is to survive the festive season between running the inn and being a single mother Hattie is close to breaking point. Over the course of an eventful week, Hattie sees that the friends are each carrying around unspoken truths, but nothing prepares her for how deeply her story will become entwined with theirs. Will this Christmas be the end of the book club story or the start of a whole new chapter? 
um literally books and christmas um like what more could you want and then the final christmas book on my list is um countdown to christmas this i picked up after the haul despite saying in that that i literally could not afford any more books and that i had enough books also despite the fact that i'm literally getting books for christmas mm, have we got space for them i don't think so anyway this one says chloe can't wait for christmas to be over her son Reuben is staying with his dad and Chloe is planning to ignore the holidays altogether. Her only festive touch is the advent calendar Reuben, has, Reuben left her to help count down the days till he's home again, but a surprise call changes everything. Chloe might be the unexpected owner of some land in Canada. Surely it's a scam, or could it just be, or could it be just the escape she needs right now? Reuben's latest note in the advent calendar tells her to say yes. In a flash, Chloe's new countdown to Christmas involves a log cabin in the middle of a snowy forest, a community that's worried for its future, a gruff lumberjack who gives her butterflies, and a lot of pancakes with maple syrup. This reminds me of... It's not necessarily a Christmas one. I don't even know her, the um, actor's name, but it's where she's working in, obviously, like a US city, and she's inherited a... Um, in in like new zealand um and she and um she arrives and it literally is like run down and she spends the time like building it back up you know, if you've seen it on netflix you'll know what i mean um so as you can tell that takes us to five books but obviously that's not a fun tbr because i already know what i'm reading so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick two or three you know what i'm going for three however this month i want it to be a physical book month so i've added all my new purchases in here um if i pick out an ebook i'm just gonna put it back in that's not this month i'm i just want a physical book month i don't know last i think the previous two months i've had a lot of ebooks so i just i know i've got loads of physical books but yeah um so i've shook these up already but just to tell you, so you know that it's not like rigged or anything. I shook it up again, as you literally saw the video proof. Has this got black on it? Yes. Amazonia. Oh, I, I know which book this is. You know what? We'll find it at the end. Um, we'll put it to the side. So we've got, what, five books here. We're going to pick three in total. Ooh. Oh, and it's a black one. And it says, The House at Sea's End. That is by Ellie Griffiths. And it's somewhere in this pile. One more. Part of me wants Ninth House, and I don't know why. Oh, and it's black. Yay! The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. That's quite good. Let me get out those three books. So, Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Obviously, Gallant was by V.E. Schwab as well, um, which was a four stars because of the ending, I think. Um, and it says, France, 1714, a desperate woman makes a desperate deal in the dark, a bargain to live forever but re be remembered by none. So begins the invisible life of Addie LaRue, shadow muse to artists throughout history, forgotten friend, confidant and lover, slipping away with the morning light. Addie passes three lives, desperate only to leave a trace of herself until the day she walks back into a small bookshop in Manhattan and meets Henry, who remembers her. After 300 years, Addie's life is restarting, but the devil never plays fair. As Henry and Addie's lives start to intertwine, they must face the consequences of the decisions they've made and the prices to be paid. Beautiful cover. One of the few hardbacks I own. Clearly, I was that desperate to own a hardback. When you take off the dust jacket, I'm sorry, but that cover is beautiful. Like, absolutely beautiful. But then, so is that. Also, slightly off point. The literal photo of this author reminds me of how I imagined Rosa to be in um, The Writing Retreat by um, Julia Bartz. Um, yeah, 
literally Rhea Schwab reminds is exact like with her red hair is exactly how I imagined like Julia um Rosa in the writing retreat to be. Then the house it sees and <sighs> have I started this? <laughs> I'm literally apparently apparently I've read eight chapters of this already. Um oops. And it says, when bones are unearthed at the foot of a North Norfolk cliff, forensic expert Dr. Ruth Galloway and D DCI Nelson are put on the case. The skeletons have lain there for decades, possibly since the Second World War, and for all that time a hideous crime has, has been concealed. When a body washes up on the beach, it becomes clear that someone wants to keep the truth of the past to stay buried, and will go to any lengths to keep it that way. Can Ruth and Nelson uncover the truth in time to stop another murder? Now, I think the reason why I I only got part way through the book is I think I started reading it and then moved either to uni or back to uni. Um, so I just, in the midst of things, didn't pick it up again. And then Amazonia by James Rowlands. It says, a government agent stumbles out of the world's most inhospitable jungle, mutilated and terrified and is dead within hours. Agent Clark had been part of a research expedition that went missing in the rainforest years earlier. Most bizarrely, he went in with one arm missing and emerged with both intact. The CIA wants Dr. Nathan Rand to join Operation Amazonia, a venture set up to discover the fate of the missing crew. Nate has made the forest his home and knows the territory like the back of his hand. But his interest is far more personal. It was his father who led the lost expedition. But this impenetrable place hides ancient unspoken terrors and a power beyond human imagining that could alter the world forever. Obviously, I've never picked eight books before, but my thought is, is that the Christmas books will probably lead me to up to Christmas, but then in the time after, um, what am I going to read? Granted, I'm at home and might pick up one of the new books I get, but at the same time, I just, I wanted some that weren't Christmas ones. Um, and obviously we get crime, thriller, fantasy. Those are the eight books that we are hopefully going to finish reading this month. Um, I love how actually when I ended up picking out books from my TBR jar, I did only end up actually picking out physical books. Because obviously I said if I picked out an ebook, I would put it back. I got quite lucky with that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what books you've decided to read this month, whether it be any festive books or whatnot. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!